Coming up this week, Google Docs and Excel get new AI powers. Anthropic launches a new feature to help engineers get up to speed quickly. Microsoft's AI CEO warns of the risks of AI psychosis. And a new study reveals whether humans or AI are better at recruiting your next employee. Stay tuned for all of that and more. And if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Google and Microsoft have both announced new AI features for two of their leading products. Google Docs is getting a new feature that will use Gemini to read a document out loud. So you can customize Gemini's AI audio output with different voices and playback speeds. And document authors can also add play buttons within the document to allow readers to listen to a doc. Now I've had a chance to play around with this and the results are pretty impressive. Here's a quick example of how this sounds. What is Perplexity Labs? An overview of the core features. Perplexity Labs is a new feature released earlier this month that combines a bunch of the product's existing capabilities. Select a voice to read your document. Select a voice to read your document. Select a voice to read your document. What is Perplexity Labs? An overview of the core features. So if you're looking for new ways to catch up with documents when you're on your morning commute or walking the dog, then check out that new feature from Google Docs. Microsoft is also adding new AI features of its own with the introduction of a new co-pilot function for Excel. Now this function works a lot like Google's own AI function that was released a few weeks back, and it lets users do things like summarize content, perform sentiment analysis, and categorize cell data. And speaking of Microsoft, this week its AI CEO warned of an epidemic of what he calls AI psychosis. In an essay published on Tuesday this week, he says that AI will soon convincingly imitate consciousness, leading some people to believe that AIs are truly conscious. AI psychosis is the growing risk that individuals will become convinced that their AI companions are truly conscious beings, and he calls this seemingly conscious AI. And as more people become convinced of its consciousness, humans may advocate for AI rights, welfare, or even AI citizenship. The consequences of all of this are unknown, he says, but we must build AI for people not to be a person. And this is particularly pertinent for things like AI voice assistants. A new analysis released this week from YouGov showed that the use cases for these AI voice assistants have barely changed since 2018. New data from YouGov shows that checking the weather, playing music and setting timers remain some of the top use cases. But with new AI-infused devices on the way, this brings with it more practical real-world risks of the impact of hallucinations. Or as one reviewer of Alexa Plus on The Verge says, a voice in your home confidently telling you something that's not true hits a little harder than a chatbot lying to you in a text window. One company that is seemingly happy for AI to make decisions on our behalf, though, is Linear. And this past week, Linear launched a new feature it calls Product Intelligence. This new feature assesses new pieces of work, triages them, and makes suggestions about which teams should pick up the work. In other words, it does a big chunk of what many product managers currently do today. And aside from that, Linear also published a new piece outlining how its engineers and product teams build high-quality software. In a new post over on its blog, they say that each week, every Wednesday, engineers identify and fix minor imperfections and not just bugs that degrade the user experience. And they call this day Quality Wednesday. So here's an example where they standardize the size of adjacent buttons. And Linear says that the practice has led to over a thousand improvements, raising the product's quality bar and training the team to spot and prevent issues earlier. So if you're interested in learning more about how companies like Linear are upholding such high quality standards throughout their product development process, check out that post over on their blog. Elsewhere this week, Anthropic has joined Google and OpenAI with the launch of their own new learning modes for Claude. Anthropic is pitching this product directly to junior developers who need to learn new skills as well as new joiners who want to get up to speed quickly with the code base. Anthropic admits that adopting these tools may initially hit productivity, but that the long-term benefit in teaching developers to understand code bases properly will pay off over time. And if you're interested in learning more about how to speed up engineering velocity using AI with tactics like this and others, then check out this week's knowledge series over on Substack, where I explore all the different ways that you may be able to use AI to boost your own team's engineering velocity. Now, this piece is framed as a discussion that you might have with a CTO, and it covers topics like onboarding new hires, writing and managing technical documentation, using AI to write code, and it covers real-world examples of how companies are using AI to speed up velocity, including a story of how one company saved over 280,000 hours 
an engineering effort by eliminating tech debt. So if you're interested in learning more about how AI may be applied to speed up velocity, then check out that post over on Substack this week. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use. And we'll start off with a tool that I came across this week called UserJot. UserJot's value proposition is simply to answer the question, why are we wasting time building the wrong things? It's essentially a centralized place where you can log all of your requests from customers, but also create a transparent roadmap with your customers to let them know which features have been prioritized and why. Users can vote for which features they'd like to see built, and you can also use UserJot to ship new features and notify all of the people who specifically requested them. They've also just released a series of new AI agents that will analyze customer feedback at scale and identify patterns so that you can take actions quickly. And the platform also automatically generates change log entries based on this feedback and what's being released. So if you're looking for new ways to manage your release process and to keep customers engaged throughout the process of building new products, then check out UserJot. Next is a product called Paradigm. And after raising $7 million in funding this week, the product was finally released to the public. And this is an AI powered spreadsheet that lets you enrich your spreadsheet with data that comes from verified sources. So these sources are from verified data providers and they allow you to perform integrations with third parties like Crunchbase and others. And you can also outsource the building of spreadsheets entirely to their AI agents. If you choose to do this, then Paradigm will give you a transparent reasoning trail, which gives you the exact steps that the model took to get to the conclusions that it made. Now, there are plenty of competitors in this space, but if you're looking for a new alternative to explore how to create AI infused spreadsheets with access to third party connections, then check out Paradigm. And the final product for this week is a to-do list with a twist. So this is called Cobot and it not only helps you to manage your tasks, it'll actually do them for you. So this product pitches itself as the first to-do app that does it for you. So you essentially add the task that needs to be done and then Cobot has access to the apps that you already use. So some of the examples that it includes on its website include preparing for an upcoming meeting where you might want to research the attendees, creating a report which, which looks at your annual recurring revenue and scheduling meetings. So if you're somebody who likes to experiment with new to-do apps, then this could be an app with a difference worth checking out. Now let's take a look at some data and trends for the week. And we'll start with the news that so far this year, ChatGPT's mobile app has generated a massive 1.35 billion up 673%. This analysis shows that Claude is a second close when it comes to revenue download per app, but ChatGPT's dominance in downloads means that this is largely irrelevant. The ChatGPT app has now been downloaded a massive 690 million times globally, compared with Grok's 39.5 million, and in 2025 alone, it has been downloaded 318 million times, up nearly 3x from 2024. And if you're looking for ways to boost your own product's engagement metrics, then you may want to read Duolingo's latest earnings report. In it, their CEO explains how one feature boosted daily active users, time spent on the app, and free-to-pay conversion metrics all at once. This is all thanks to a new feature that they introduced called Energy. So with Energy, each exercise uses a unit of energy, regardless of whether the answer is right or wrong. Users can earn back energy by getting multiple answers correct in a row, and unlike hearts, which penalize mistakes, Energy encourages users to keep learning by rewarding progress rather than punishing errors. Their CEO says that we have rarely seen a feature move more than one of these metrics, let alone all three. So a fascinating little case study into how product design choices can impact engagement metrics. Elsewhere, a new piece of research from MIT shows that 95% of generative AI pilots at companies are failing to achieve rapid revenue acceleration with only 5% succeeding. This new piece of research is based on 150 interviews with leaders, 350 employees and 300 public AI deployments. More than half of the generative AI budgets are devoted to sales and marketing Yet this report actually found that the biggest ROI was in back office and automation. So in other words, eliminating business processes, cutting external agency costs and streamlining operations. So if you're interested in exploring ways you may be able to deploy generative AI in ways that raise revenue, then check out that study. Another study worth exploring this week is the latest engineering survey from Pragmatic Engineer. This survey finds that Jira is still the most widely used product development platform, but it largely depends on the size of the company. For companies with 10,000 plus employees, virtually all of them use Jira, but for smaller companies, Linear is almost as popular. GitHub's Copilot remains the most popular tool for engineers, 
with 83% of developers saying that they use an AI code at work. Miro remains the most popular whiteboarding tool, Confluence is top for writing documentation, and Figma remains number one for UI design. So if you're interested in learning more about the state of engineering in 2025, then that survey is definitely worth a look. And finally, is AI better than humans at hiring the right candidates? A new study released this week suggests that might be the case. So this study took 70,000 applicants for customer service jobs in the Philippines who were randomly assigned to be interviewed by either a human recruiter or an AI voice agent. But in both cases, a human recruiter always made the final hiring decision. The study found that AI interviews increased job offers by 12%, job starts by 18%, and 30-day retention by 17% compared to human-led interviews. 78% of candidates actually said they would prefer to be interviewed by AI, and the quality of the interview itself was deemed to be higher in AI-led interviews as well. So when AIs led the interviews, they elicited more hiring-relevant information, covered more relevant topics, and were also more cost-effective, since people who would typically be involved in the process didn't have to join the initial interview. So if you're somebody who doesn't enjoy interviews, and you'd rather outsource at least part of the process, then this new study seems to back up the idea that that's a good idea. And on that note, I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much for listening and watching, and I'll be back next week with another briefing.